we have our next guest with us now. The distribution of the initial consignment of COVID-19 vaccines for Nigeria is already being trailed by controversy. A breakdown of the allocation to different states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory Abuja seems to be the bone of contention. Joining us now to try to offer greater clarity about this situation is Dr. Faisal Shuaib, Public Health Specialist and Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, a parastatal of the Federal Ministry of Health. Dr. Shuaib, uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to the morning show. Yes, thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Shai. Well, very quickly, uh, could you please uh, shed uh, some light on the controversy that has arisen around the planned allocation of the first consignment of 100,000 COVID-19 uh, vaccine doses among the uh, various states of the Federation? The states are saying that they were not consulted, they were not involved, and uh, they do not understand the uh, criteria for the allocation that was uh, published by your office. I'm surprised to, to hear that uh, there is any allocation uh, pattern uh, that has been published uh, from my office. We have not communicated to any states uh, uh, or any entity whatsoever uh, the quantities of vaccines that uh, will be uh, shared with uh, uh, the states. Uh, if there's any official communication, it will, of course, come from my office or the office of uh, the Honorable Minister of Health or, for that matter, the Presidential Task Force uh, on COVID-19 that is responsible for the overall coordination of uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in, in Nigeria. Uh, there's no official communication around uh, what quantities of vaccines will go uh, to any state. Uh, maybe what uh, people are talking about are some of the conversations around uh, the potential uh, priori prioritization of, uh, of uh, uh, the Nigerian populace. Where we've spoken about the fact that we will be prioritizing uh, the health workers, uh, the elderly, uh, those with uh, comorbidities, uh, people that have other diseases, uh, and that will be covering up to 70%. Uh, of uh, the populace. Of course, in doing all of that, we have to uh, consider the epidemiology of the virus. That is to say, uh, who are the people? Where are the hotspots, right? And we are aware of the hotspot local government areas. We're also aware of the uh, data around the health workers. So if you're going to prioritize the health workers, that has to be part of the, uh, the discussion. Uh, so I, I believe that uh, it is very possible that... Uh, uh, the uh, agency is being, uh, you know, uh, quoted out of out of context. There is no official communication uh, from uh, the agency on the vaccines. Uh, this uh, the hundred thousand doses are actually uh, a drop in the ocean compared to what we need. We, we, we're looking to uh, vaccinate up to 150 million Nigerians. A hundred thousand uh, doses of vaccines uh, is is not anywhere close to what we need. We leave that subject. All the reports that I've seen in this regard say, according to MPHCDA data, the, all the reports claim that the data was provided by the MPHCDA, and it, the states are listed. Are you saying that uh, that's fake news, that somebody made that up, and that even the governors that have reacted are lying against your agency? We must have been quoted out of out of context. I do not think that uh, any governor will lie. Uh, if, for example, uh, people see any uh, you know uh, draft documents or any uh, presentations uh, that are trying to explain how uh, we will be distributing the vaccines, and people don't understand uh, all of the background, right? Uh, then uh, people are likely to draw conclusions that are not correct. I want to restate without any ambiguity that we have not communicated officially uh, to any states the quantities of vaccines that uh, will be uh, distributed to them. I believe if there's any discussion with uh, any states or subnational entity, 
uh, that official communication should be the basis for any conversation. Okay. So you are categorically denying the list that puts Kano State ahead of Lagos and the likes of Kogi ahead of the FCT in terms of distribution. If that did not come, emanate from your agency, uh, kindly inform Nigerians of the national vaccination strategy for coronavirus. What is the likely distribution plan uh, for states? What are the criteria you're going to use? And then we do understand that this initial 100,000, 100,000 doses from Pfizer, uh, uh, from the international donors is from Pfizer. And we understand the requirement, the refrigeration requirement for Pfizer vaccine. Do we have the logistic infrastructure uh, required to keep it safe and efficacious? And do we also have the personnel to inoculate Nigerians when these uh, vaccines do arrive? Thank you very much for that uh, very brilliant question. Uh, again, we're going to be prioritizing our health workers when it comes to uh, the people that are going to take these vaccines uh, first and foremost, just because they are the ones that are in the front lines. They are the ones that are sacrificing. They've been so dedicated uh, in terms of going uh, to confront the danger of uh, a patient that has COVID-19. And uh, as a healthy health worker, you go and you try and treat that person. So Mr. President uh, uh, has really approved that they have to be uh, prioritized. We're also prioritizing those people who are likely to fare worse if they were to uh, contract the disease. So those people who are elderly, uh, people who are 50 and above, uh, people who uh, have other diseases uh, like hypertension, like cancer, uh, diabetes, those who have uh, lung conditions, uh, those who are immunocompromised, uh, those are the you know, people that are also going to be prioritized. We're also going to be looking at the epidemiology of the virus. That is to say, where is it that we have uh, the most uh, cases? Where, where is it that we have the hotbeds? Where is it that people are coming uh, you know, down with the, the virus? Where is it that we're having the transmission? So all of that will play into the final uh, allocation of doses uh, to the states. Again, unless and until there is a, an official communication from MPHCDA, about this allocation of uh, doses, any other uh, communication, any other, uh, you know, data that is seen are, are, are probably not, uh, you know, being uh, interpreted in the right uh, context. Uh, now, in terms of uh, uh, the cold chain requirements, you're absolutely right. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine requires uh, around minus 70 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. Uh, we do not have uh, the ultra cold chain that is required. That is to say, uh, we do not have the equipment that will keep the vaccines, uh, you know, potent uh, all over the country. We have only a few uh, at the NCDC uh, that uh, just because they use them for storing uh, their reagents and we've been collaborating with uh, the, NC we're going to be collaborating with the NCDC uh, to make sure uh, that uh, we, the 100,000 doses will be kept uh, in those uh, ultra cold chain equipment that exist. But beyond that, we're also innovating where we've reached out to uh, the private sector. So apart from the, the ultra cold chain equipment that will be uh, placed uh, at the national level and uh, potentially this, uh, the zonal levels, uh, we'll also uh, need to transport the uh, vaccines to uh, the local government areas, and even uh, to communities, uh, eventually, the primary health care centers where people will be uh, given the vaccines. Uh, in order to maintain the vaccines at the right temperature, they have to be transported with dry ice. Dry ice will keep the vaccines in that uh, milieu for up, to five, for, uh, for up to five days. So this dry ice uh, will be produced by, by the private sector operators, and we've already reached an agreement that they're going to be supporting uh, us uh, with uh, uh, those types of, uh, uh, you know, interventions. So we're really excited about what we've really laid out uh, in terms of a comprehensive plan to make sure that we judiciously use uh, the 100,000 doses. Again, I want to reiterate that this 100,000 doses is really, really uh, a drop in the ocean. So the Presidential Task Force uh, on COVID-19 and the Federal Ministry of Health uh, is working very hard with us to see how 
we can, uh, you know, get uh, the COVAX facility to, uh, to give us more doses, but also through the vaccine uh, acquisition task team of the African Union, uh, we're likely to uh, um, uh, access additional doses uh, Dr. from Shai, the 270 Dr. million, 300 million uh, doses. Dr. Shai, uh, if you can hear me, sorry to interrupt you. We need to take a quick commercial break. After that, we'll come back to you. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise mm -hmm. News Channel. Still with us is Dr. Fisal Shuayu, Public Health Specialist and Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Uh, Dr. Shuayu, thank you very much for staying with us. Uh, so if you may just uh, conclude your thoughts before we move on to the next uh, question. Okay, right. So uh, I was just talking about the fact that uh, we are also uh, plugged into different conversations around, around how uh, we can get vaccines for Nigerians uh, so that we can really get ahead of uh, the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And uh, everybody's working very hard uh, to look at the different options. But what is a priority to Nigerians and for us at the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and the Federal Ministry of Health uh, is that uh, whatever vaccine is brought uh, and uh, utilized in Nigeria has to be potent, it has to be safe. This is why we're collaborating uh, with uh, NAVDAC, which is the uh, statutory uh, organization that has uh, uh, the responsibility to uh, certify that the vaccines are safe. Only and unless and until we get these vaccines uh, that are certified by NAVDAC, we will be sending them uh, out to the general public. All right. Uh, th thank you so much uh, for your time, Dr. Faisal. But I want to read something to you. Uh, there's a report by the citizens that's, uh, that says uh, your organization at a webinar on Friday released a sharing formula for how the vaccine will be shared. They said you had a webinar on Friday where you released this. And they brought out the number that have been quoted in all the national dailies. So, because now you said we've been quoted out of context. Out of which context? If they, they said that you released this at a webinar. And if possible, maybe for the sake of journalistic expression, no, so, we would like to get so, that so, webinar and play it back to be able to know what exactly you said right, during think, the webinar. I mean, yeah, because I will have to call for that webinar, you know, for the sake of Nigeria's watching out there. And secondly, I just want to, still on data. You said you're going to give this vaccine to people with comorbidities. I mean, do you have data of how many Nigerians are living with different comorbidities as we speak today in each of the 704 local governments? Like if I say, okay, uh, it's just a local government. How many Nigerians over the age of 60 living with comorbidities? Do you have their data? Do you have their names? Do you have their tracking? And is there any talk with China based on vaccine, COVAC or some co-vaccine? Co because we are hearing Coronavac. Coronavac. We are hearing now from those that are taking it to other countries like Brazil that the efficacy is just 50 percent. So just just three questions quickly, sir. Right. I want to reiterate the fact that uh, uh, we have not communicated any sharing formula to the states. I believe that uh, uh, we are aware of the communication channels from the national to the states. Uh, in the past with other vaccine programs. And sir, did you have any webinar on Friday? Did you have any webinar on Friday, sir? Did you, yes, have, did you have any webinar on Friday where you issued out this statement? Friday, what Friday? Last Friday. I, Last I believe Friday. That, I believe that there was, there, there, we have had multiple, uh, we have had multiple engagements uh, with uh, different stake, stakeholders. I want to put it on record, right, uh, as, the, as the chief executive of the organization, that we have not finalized the distribution formula uh, for the vaccines. So any communication that has not arisen from my office is not correct. Now, on the issue of other vaccines, like uh, the uh, Chinese vaccines, there is a protocol that is established even before COVID-19 vaccines, that if a pharmaceutical company wants its product to be accessed by any country. They go to the regulatory uh, institution. So NAVDAC is there. Any credible pharmaceutical company knows that they are supposed to take their dossier. 
that describes everything that has been done in terms of uh, the bench work, uh, using guinea pigs, the clinical trials, all of the work that has been done around the vaccines have to be presented to NAVDAQ. It is only when NAVDAQ approves and certifies that these vaccines have followed the protocols and that they are safe for Nigerians. That is when we can now begin to talk about procuring them. So it is not all of the sing and dance about the different vaccines that are available. There's a protocol that is available uh, for all Nigerians, for all vaccines. We will not skip those protocols, no matter the pressures and all of the offering, right? I know uh, that uh, people are asking, oh, we need the vaccines, we need the vaccines. But we will not bring any vaccines to Nigerians until they have been certified as safe for use in Nigeria by the NAFDAQ. This is the position of the Presidential Task Force uh, on COVID-19 and the Federal Ministry of Health. So uh, I want everybody to remain assured that it is not the question of the race to start the process of vaccination. It is the question of ensuring that all of the protocols that guarantees the safety of Nigerians, that is the priority in this conversation. Now, in terms of uh, the data that exists around people who have comorbidities, so before we even start the process of vaccination, there's what we call a micro plan. So a micro plan is uh, the process of identifying the people that you are going to vaccinate. So for health workers who are prioritized, we have an electronic registration that will bring everybody uh, into uh, a data bank. Then as we go to the communities, this is something that we've done with the polio eradication program, for example, to identify different settlements and different individuals. So as we go and do that plan, we will get data from the hospitals, get clean data from individuals. So when we come to your household, for example, we'll have to take data on everybody that is in that house, household that is eligible for the vaccine and also ask about their conditions. These are some of the preparations that we are putting on board even before the vaccines arrive, so that when the vaccines arrive, we already have all of this data available. But these are the vaccines that are arriving at the end of the month. Why are you just putting all this preparation in place for vaccines that are arriving anytime soon? The preparations that we're putting in place are enhanced preparations uh, that are specific to COVID-19. Almost every year in the last 10 years, we've had uh, campaigns, at least uh, four to five campaigns, uh, polio campaigns, yellow fever campaigns, measles campaigns that if you are aware as media pra practitioners. So we're going to leverage on all of those experiences uh, for the COVID-19. But for the specific uh, you know, uh, data that we need, for example, around comorbidities, those are already available at the Federal Ministry of Health, the NCDC, uh, as part of their database. But we cannot just go and start using those data unless we actually validate those data. That is part of what we're going to be doing as the, uh, using our micro plan. The micro plan process requires the use of geographic information system. And Nigeria, believe me, uh, you know, is uh, one of the leaders when it comes to using uh, GIS to develop high resolution maps uh, using the grid three. We collaborate with the Minister of uh, uh, Finance, Budget and National Planning around the, with the Green Tree Program that also specifies not only the health facilities, uh, the uh, schools, uh, the infrastructure in every environment, but every single settlement, right? So the whole micro-planning process is going to uh, involve actually getting all of those details. This is the preparatory work that is required for us to have a successful outing. Like they always say, it is not how quickly you start but how well you finish. Well, uh, Dr. Shuaib, uh, a few weeks ago, it was reported that uh, your agency was conducting what it called a knowledge perception attitude survey. Um, how far have we gone with that? And if that has been uh, concluded, what are your preliminary uh, findings with regard to people's knowledge perception and attitudes towards COVID-19? Second, in terms of timelines, how soon are we likely uh, to get the vaccines? And second, how soon will Nigeria uh, launch a vaccination plan? Is this something that will happen, say, end of January, February, or perhaps next year? 
So you're absolutely right. Uh, quite early in the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, we, uh, as an agency, rolled out a KAP study. So that is the knowledge, attitude, and practice uh, study. Uh, those, the study has been finalized and is currently under peer review. Uh, we will be sharing the, uh, the information once we get, uh, you know, some validation of the results. We do not want to share results that have not been uh, validated. Uh, in terms of uh, the expected timelines for when we will get the vaccines, we rely uh, on the information from our, the, our partners uh, and uh, the pharmaceutical companies. What we've received as communication uh, from the COVAX facility is that we're likely to get the first 100,000 doses in the first phase uh, by the end of uh, January, uh, early uh, February. We expect that uh, we will get additional millions of doses uh, before the end of the first quarter of 2021. Uh, we do believe that uh, once uh, we receive these doses, uh, that within the space of uh, you know, a fortnight, uh, we'll be able to, to roll out uh, the, the vaccination everywhere uh, we're able to, uh, to prioritize. Uh, so really, it's a question of uh, getting the vaccines here and we'll be ready uh, to, to make sure that we, uh, to, we roll it out. We do not for one moment take for granted that it will be a Herculean task, that it is a very complex uh, process uh, that will uh, be attended with some logistical challenges. Uh, but we we'll rely on the fact that uh, this is not the first time that we're conducting a campaign. Like I mentioned to you, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency has been conducting, you know, uh, five, six campaigns every year, you know, for different diseases. We're going to leverage on all of that experience uh, to roll out uh, these uh, campaigns to cover uh, Nigerians. Now, one thing that Nigeria has as an advantage over so many other countries, such as the U.S., and the UK that are struggling uh, to roll out their, uh, their, uh, their COVID-19 vaccine uh, campaign is the fact that they are not as used to having campaigns like we are. They have a routinized system where people go and get the vaccines, right? So they hardly do con conduct these campaigns. So for them to conduct this campaign now, they're finding it logistically difficult. But this is something that they can learn from Nigeria because we've been conducting campaigns for the last wow. two decades. So well, good to I hear. do not uh, underestimate yes. the difficulty, but we are capable of conducting campaigns Thank that you. will uh, be able to reach uh, up to 70% of Nigerians. Thank you very much, Dr. Faisal Shaib, for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.